Gambit Chads, I should warn you that the Gambit I'm about to show you is actually very good. William Grafe, the Gambit Man, takes his seat at the board. E4. E5. Knight F3. Bishop C5. The Bush Gas Gambit on the board. On with the Gambit glasses. Hero Pod unlocked! If you are a fan of dubious gambits, then maybe you might be a little disappointed by how legitimate and how actually playable this pawn sacrifice opening is. But not to worry, not to worry. In addition to being legitimate, it is also one that you can get with very high frequency almost all the time against this line. It is also super duper aggressive, so many tricks, and also very unknown. Actually so unknown that it doesn't even have a name. Although you, you see above my head right now, the LC0 Gambit in reference to Leela Chess Zero, a, a new deep learning neural network, who is a huge, huge fan of this line, such a huge fan of this line that it was named after by the creator of this Leecha study. This is a, a very extensive, awesome Leecha study that I found on the internet by someone named PD159. Major shout out to that person. This Leecha study was kind of like the basis for this video and it's it's super super in depth and it's actually more in depth than this video is going to be i wanted to cover not necessarily all the best replies although we're going to get to that but mostly what your opponents are going to play so without further ado without further ado let's get right into it it is against b3 the nimzo larson opening and I know maybe you guys, some of you guys are like, if it's not E4 or D4, I don't want to talk about it. But the deal with B3 is that um, I actually see it a lot at higher rating levels and even in bullet all the time. Um, I think a lot of people are really liking B3 because it gives kind of quite a variety of options after Bishop B2, like let's say something like this. White here now plays F4 without having to deal with like the From or the laying held gambit really excellent control here and then just native three bishop e, uh, pawn e3 and white here just has just 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 so many options it's very very flexible and also kind of tricky because e5 would be the move to counter that and actually to really control the center after we play an ac6 protecting our pawn and now here the best try for white is e3 coming out bishop b5 to hit the knight and thus hit the pawn and why e3 instead of just knight f3 because of this move just e4 we counterattack the knight and build an excellent center so mostly your opponents doing this will play e3 and now well when bishop b5 comes it's actually quite annoying to protect this pawn it's like are you playing d6 blocking this guy in or like bishop d6 somehow but then there's going to be pressure on g7 after like f4 and knight f3 so this is kind of where the tricks come in it's like how do you defend against this bishop right well we are going to walk right into it we're just going to walk right into it. We're going to play d5, taking the whole center, and our opponent's going to be like, wow, what a noob. Bishop b5. Now you've got a pin here. This pawn is hanging. If you, well, you're going to play bishop d6, but then f4, and your g7 pawn is hanging. Your rook's going to get trapped. I'm going to put even more pressure on e5, and I pinned this knight. That was the only thing that was protecting here. Well, our answer is that we are not going to protect this pawn at all, but rather play the very creative move, knight g to e7 or actually just knight to e7, because it is not g with this one being illegal. But knight e7, what are we doing? What are we doing? This pawn is just hanging, and our opponent can take it. Although, I'm going to say, after evaluating this myself with Stockfish 15 and the, the latest um, LC0, I would not recommend any white player to take this pawn, even when prepared. So we're going to talk about Bishop takes e5, and I'm very, very excited for all the crazy lines there. It's going to be so, so destructive. And the other thing I want to say about this video is I'm going to give you guys multiple times to pause the video and come up with uh, uh, the move at moments that I feel are especially instructive or fun. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. So there's Bishop takes e5, and there's Knight to f3. So Knight to f3 is kind of the main way to decline the pawn as you see here the the kind of comprises 14 percent of the moves we see 11 percent for just taking this but this makes absolutely no sense this was the whole point of bringing the knight here and white is here just just worse so we're only going to talk about knight f3 and bishop takes e5 here 
Otherwise, black's next move, you know, if white just does something, is just a six, kicking the bishop, and knight takes e6, and look at how beautiful that worked out. We're protecting here with a bishop pair and an excellent center. So much better out of the opening. So knight f3, let's talk about it. So they're attacking our pawn, and we play e4, as we discussed, when the knight comes here. So white here has knight d4 and knight e5, and knight e5 is actually better than knight d4, although knight d4 is more common. Another point in our favor. And so some pressure here on the pin. Let's play the very natural bishop to d7. And very quickly, white can find themselves in hot water. For example, for example, let's follow the most common moves of just knight takes c6. We take back, and then they castle. Here, you can actually pause the video if you'd like. A very, very important positional move for black. The move here is queen to h4. And after queen to h4, black is much, much better and attacking for real. And you can see by the arrows. So basically, the knight left the f3 square because we played pawn to e4, and now we will be taking full advantage. Queen g5 was also a good move. We will be taking full advantage of all these squares that the knight left, and there is really nobody in the king's vicinity. For example, a move like d3, we play bishop d6, threatening h2. That's checkmate. If they play h3, they will still get mated because we've got two bishops pointing that way. So they play something like g3, we step our queen up, this pawn's coming to h4, it'll take, it'll open our files, huge, huge attack coming, in addition to the threats of like bishop g4 and zigzagging in this way. So, lots and lots of fun times black can have after queen to h4. That is why white actually should play this move, this rare move, you'll find it here as the fourth most common move, queen to h5, kind of controlling some squares around their camp. Uh, that's white's best try. And here we actually have the very nice move, knight b4, I like this move a lot. In addition to protecting this pawn, it hit, threatens mate on c2, uh, not mate on c2, it threatens a fork on c2, proposes this bishop trade, and after queen takes d7, it's really just quite pleasant. White needs to awkwardly defend this pawn, they can't kick this knight out, because knight d3 check will be nasty, and castles, and queen takes d7 was very, very nice for us. And here black is doing excellently anyway. Uh, the other option white has is to take this knight. It doesn't really change too many things. Queen g4, for whatever reason, is the second most common move. I think they like threatening this. It's not even a threat. Rook g8 would pin that bishop anyway, but still we're going to play this nice move h5, which is a move we want to play nonetheless. Queen comes back, queen comes out, threatens g2. We're castling long, we're playing bishop d6, we're lifting our rook around. Lots and lots of fun things happening in this position for black. And if they castle here, queen to h4, changes very little. Bishops are coming into great position. h5, castles long, rooks coming into great position. White is in a lot, a lot of trouble here. White should probably play this move f4, in which case black can proceed anyway with castles. h5, bring the rooks in to the game. Uh, f f4, the purpose of which is to block this diagonal. So knight d4, not the best, uh, or although white could castle here, also doesn't really help them much because we're able to take and forcing bishop takes d7, if they recaptured, they would be down a piece. Forcing bishop takes d7, we're going to play queen takes back. They take here, we play knight c6. So this knight made its journey to c6. It's awkwardly placed on e7, to be sure. It's awkwardly placed, the blocks in the bishop. But it comes to c6 here with a tempo on white's dark square bishop, which should retreat. And after castles long, I made a lot of arrows here. But black here has a very, very nice position. Lots of arrows, uh, we can break down the arrows. Bishop d6. And queen to e6 are very, very nice, solid squares for the pieces. For example, if d3, let's play queen to e6 so that we can recapture with pawn without trading queens. We still have uh, ideas to attack, so we really don't want to trade queens in this position. Bishop can come to d6. f5, f4 is on the table. h5, h4, h3 is on the table. Why not? We have opposite sides castling and very, very little defense of this king that we want to attack. So bishop d6, knight e5, h5. Rook can come around. Lots and lots of good stuff here happening for black. And this is the best white can really play, probably after knight to d4. So white has another option here, which is knight e5, which is a little bit better because uh, it really kind of takes away bishop d7, although bishop d7 is still playable. But wait, here should take this bishop and try to say that they have the bishop pair. Although bishop d7 is still very playable, and you can do it if you'd like. However, I like this other move, a6. So I'm encouraging white to make a decision here with this uh, knight on c6. And this is one of my favorite traps. This is one of my, fa my, my favorite traps maybe in any opening. Um, although it might not even be the best trap of this video, but it's, it, it's just, it's just so nice. And I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video after the next most common moves for white. Bishop takes c6 check. Knight takes. Knight takes. 
Why am I asking to pause the video in this position? What could possibly be the move? It's not a trick question. It's not pawn takes e6. It is queen g5. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden things are looking very, very poor for white. Because this pawn on g2 is such a huge problem. And there's 10 games in this, in this position. Black has won 9 of them. Uh, a lot of them are white actually trying to retreat the knight and seeing what happens. It is not going to end well. So the funny thing is, either of these retreat squares, right? Both of those retreat squares. So queen takes g2, we hit the rook. Rook f1, bishop h3. We're down a piece, but we're, we're running mate. Queen e2. So we can take it twice, but we only get an exchange. So they have two pieces for a rook, which is not good. But what we can do here is this knight that came back is out of squares. It is out of squares. What are the odds of that? It has nowhere to go that is covered, that is covered, and we're going to take the knight and also take this rook. For example, f3, proposing a queen trade, trade everything here on f1, take here, and black is completely winning in the same game. So very, very funny stuff. Oh, maybe they should go to e5? Is that helpful? It's defended by the bishop there. It is not helpful. It is, in fact, almost the same exact situation because the knight is trapped here as well. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What about a5? Does that help? No. You guessed it. No. B6. Or or actually even better here might be bishop to g4. Bishop to g4. There's not even a knight here to block on e2. So queen c1, bishop h3, and that is lost. So funny stuff here. Uh, white could defend mate on g2. They could defend mate on g2 by castling, which is the most common move. However, we keep coming and here we can checkmate them actually rather quickly if they're not careful bishop g4 excellent move threatening the queen white here could actually probably give their rook is probably the best idea uh, although that's not gonna end well for them and after queen to c1 stepping out of the way we play bishop f3 threatening mate and now all of a sudden we're just zigzagging in here and there's not a thing they can do about it which i find really funny for example if they bring this knight back into the game and take our bishop, they would need a second knight to come take this pawn because we are mating them on g2 with either the pawn or the bishop's support. So, great, great stuff in this line. Queen to g5, what a move, what a move. And otherwise, if they play something like g3, you can throw in bishop to g4 or, or hit the queen and then recapture here with a phenomenal position. You're not even down any material. So, not the best for white there. They can lead with knight takes e6. This is smarter than leading with bishop takes e6. Even though the bishop's attacked, our queen's attacked. So we do have to recapture here, and they actually can get this position this way, right? Whereas in the other line, it was a knight. So we play queen g5. In this position, it's a bishop if they led with the knight, if that, if that makes sense. So we have to take back here. So we get this position, white castles, and we play bishop to d6. Uh, actually setting another trap for them, which is bishop takes g7, which is the most common move and leads to checkmate in so many ways. In so many ways. I'll show you what's happening if they don't take g7, though. So, for example, a move like d3. You guessed it. We're coming out queen g5. Queen h4 also made, made sense. Queen g5, I like it as well. We're trying to play bishop to h3 with a checkmate threat on g2. Provoke g3. Then h5, h4, that's a hook for the pawn to trade off with. This rook's coming down. Everybody's joining the party. This is a really killer attack. Also, with queen g5, we have the other threat that I should probably mention. Bishop to g4 and bishop to f3. And zigzagging in here for mate after they play pawn g3. So, mate threat can come very quick. These bishops and the queen are playing super, super well. There's no knight here to guard these squares. Critically, we play d4. There's no knight there. We've got great great diagonals to work with in all these lines. I think that's kind of the bottom line here. The best try for, for white is to play f4 uh, to try and block some of these diagonals. We play here castles, and I drew some arrows here um, to underscore some of the ideas. a5, a4 is nice, opening some files. Bishop can come to a6. That's a nice diagonal for the bishop. And this other idea that, that Lila likes, which is maneuvering the rook around to g6 to kind of keep the attack going. Also, all possible ideas. So, anyway, but really just black has the bishop pair here and more space. Uh, white did have the bishop takes g7 move in this position. We played bishop to d6, and we allow gave them the option to take on g7. And after rook g8, bishop b2, I cannot believe white players are doing this. This, if you turn on the engine... Okay, actually, you know what? Pause the video. Pause the video. Black here has several candidate moves. They have queen g5. 
They have queen h4. They have bishop takes h2. They have bishop h3. They have bishop g4. They have rook takes g2. <laughs> Pause the video. Think for a minute. Tell me which one you like. If your answer was literally anything I just said, you are correct. <laughs> Any of those moves, as long as you gave an answer. White is so completely toasted in this position, it is impossible to overstate how bad this is for white. Because all these pieces are just so good, are just tearing at this poor white king at either the g2 or the h2 points, and none of the white pieces are helpful at all, and white has but one pawn to show for this. So, uh, I'll, I'll show you the fastest route to mate, which is bishop takes h2, king takes h2, it's gonna be all checks. Queen h4, so th this is really fun. King g1, sacrifice the rook, bishop to h3 and other things we're winning as well, but sacrifice the rook. King takes g2, check on h3. Uh, King g1 here gets white mated very quickly. This does not delay mate much. Bishop to g4 check, if they go here, we force them back to g1. If they went to g1 to start with, we can either take the queen, or we can just slide right into f3, where mate is incoming very, very shortly, or even shorter than that. So, fun, fun stuff in this line. I don't think I missed anything. So, very fun stuff. I missed one thing. They can go here, bishop to e2, after swapping the knights. So, after a6, they can play knight takes c6, knight takes. And instead of trading everything on c6, they can play back, bishop e2. Not really very helpful. I'm sure you can guess the move. It's queen g5. Always the great, uh, always a great idea. Once we get the pawn to e4, we want to play queen g5 all the time, attacking g2, encouraging them to castle, which would just lose the rook for them in the best case scenario after they play pawn g3, which is the only way to guard me. Otherwise, they play pawn g3 here. Bishop can still hang out on h3, stopping castling. h5, h4, safe king over here. White is in a horrendous position. So, fun stuff after knight f3. White has a couple ways out of it into playable positions where we're still having fun, but really we're playing e4, we're getting our queen into g5, we're getting our bishop to d6, and lots and lots of targets on this side of the board. So, seems like this pawn actually caused a lot of damage for white. It kind of took away the f3 square, it opened up this diagonal, and it made that knight move, giving us access to all these squares. Maybe, maybe, they should get rid of that pawn. They should get rid of that guy. Maybe they'll have better luck this way. <laughs> we play here a6. And it's very, very forcing. It, it, this this kind of looks dumb for a second, right? It's like, oh, we're down a pawn and their bishops are out, and we play this weird move in 87. But we play now a6, hitting the bishop, and if the bishop retreats, we take this guy for free. If the bishop goes to a4, that's also bad because now this is trapped and this is hanging. So the bishop must take here, which lends us the very, very nice knight takes c6 capture, which opens this, opens this, hits the bishop. This is where the fun begins, as Anakin Skywalker would say. So let's talk about bishop to b2. But before we do, we'll talk about this uh, less common move, bishop to g3. Bishop to g3, it's playable, like we can't win the rook right away or anything, d4 and ac3 are possible, but with bishop to g3 what we are going to do, first we're actually going to include this move h5, threatening to trap the bishop with h4. For example, if white does something, we play h4, it has one more square, and then it's toast. So white here should probably play something like h4 themselves. And the reason why we include this will become clear in a moment, because we want to jam this right down their throats, d4, taking away knight c3, and with, with t4, we're, we're going to have no issues castling, by the way. Like, like these bishops are coming out, no problem. Got their pick of the litter for squares. Queen coming up, pick of the litter for squares. Castling, rooks coming to the center, worst case scenario. We are putting a ton of pressure on white, who needs to find some place for their king and some squares for their pieces. For example, here, if knight to f3, as is the most common move, we play now bishop to g4, and now actually you're starting to see why we included h5 and h4. White does not have this move h3 to chase our bishop away, and we have here a very nice pin. They can't make this pawn move, and it's... Black here has a lot of good ideas, um, and I think White's two most common moves kind of underscore this. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go a couple moves further here. Queen e2. So they're trying to take and, and hit our king, right? We have this really nice move. Rook to h6. Rook to h6, making even further use of this h5 move. And after takes, they would all, like lose their queen, or bishop e5, we have f6 here, right? So they'd lose their queen in this position. Or even knight takes d4, I guess? Double pin here, they can't take our knight with either piece. So, 
Really, really nice maneuvery there. And if castles, if castles, another great reason we included h5 and h4. You guys can pause the video if you'd like. I really like this move as well. It is g5. It is g5, and after h takes just h4, and this pawn's coming to h3. Really, really undermining this poor knight that's going to be hanging due to this brutal pin. So lots and lots of crazy, crazy fun stuff here for black. Uh, yeah, queen d5, totally playable. I know we should throw an h2 check. King over. Now queen d5. Ah, the issue is that otherwise you need this to come with check. I was afraid there that, that we would have some issues on that diagonal. But here, no worries. This is coming with check, take, and now nobody guards the rook. <laughs> but... Uh, Yes, we can go all out on this king pretty much, or no wor no worries even playing a move just like bishop to d6, swapping the bishops, queen takes d6, castles, everything is groovy for black in this position. So not bishop to g3, but rather bishop to b2, as almost everyone will play, that's where the bishop's coming back. And now, you guessed it, queen g5. Big idea. No bishop over here, yummy pawn over here. So white here has a few options to deal with this. This is kind of like the main position. And we've got a few options. They've got g3, they've got king f1, they've got queen to f3, and they've got knight to f3, which is kind of a counter gambit of this pawn. Which one shall we deal with first? Let's look at just g3. I think it's kind of the simplest. There's really not much to say about g3. With queen f3, it's it's actually, it's, it, it's the main move here, and it makes sense. It looks kind of like the best. King f1 and g3 look like major concessions in the position. Queen to f3 looks like white really should have no problem. This is the nastiest, nastiest trap that almost everybody will fall for. I absolutely would have fallen for it myself um, coming up after queen to f3. <laughs> I'm so, so excited for that. All right, let's build the suspense for a minute. G3, I'll turn off Mr. Fish here. G3, we're, we're going to take advantage of these light squares, for sure. They have no light square bishop, they have all dark square pawns. So yes, this is Swiss cheese central. Holes everywhere. Bishop G4 hitting the queen. White should play here F3, deflecting our bishop. We just come back. And now, lots of ideas for black. Uh, really poor development for white, for example. Um, we can play here h5 and h4, undermining the g3 point. And I'll show you one line, actually, that I really liked that follows a, a lot of the most common moves from this point. I'll show you one line that I really, really liked. Is here with knight c3. Okay, we castle long. Queen e2. And now, this strike that I'm sure you're very familiar with, uh, uh, or that you will be in these lines, where they take on e5, it is the strike with d4, hitting right in the middle uh, against this knight. Knight e4 makes a lot of sense. And now this absolutely nasty, nasty move that you would not think to play. For to choose the square for your queen, where would you go? It is queen to e5 that we're going to choose, which looks very unintuitive. It looks like you just put yourself right in a pin. So white's castling long. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I just hit the down arrow instead of the right arrow. All right, let's get back. Let's get back. So, so this is where we were, right? At least, at least this will give us a refresher on where we were, how we got here, yeah. So, after queen to e5, okay, castles, right? So this was the point. This is why they played knight c3 and queen e2. Absolutely filthy, filthy move here from black. Pause the video. What can black do? If you got it, I am very impressed. Drop it in the comments. Bishop to a3. Bishop to a3, deflecting this piece. I said it was good, so we're going to make it move. Takes a3 and d3. And d3. Otherwise, it, like, if it's our move again, we play d3, they can't take our queen. So we're attacking this queen and attacking this bishop twice. So, takes, we play d3. Okay, we're threatening the queen and we're threatening mate. But wait, but wait, can't they just take this pawn? and create a square, check, king c2, and if we take here, maybe the bishop on b2 could guard them for, for, for a minute, right? Takes, bishop here, takes, king c1, oh, maybe they're hanging on. Oh, oh no, oh no, another blow coming. We need this guy to move again. We need him to move again. Knight b4, knight b4. White here has but one legal move. It is bishop takes b4, and now they are out of blockers around their king 
king to c3, this is mate in one, we've got our bishop on e6, king to c1, bishop takes b3, and <laughs> we formed a wall of these pieces to block, of pawns to block these pieces, and absolutely nobody can guard queen c2, because this queen is walled out by her own pieces, and queen c2 will happen next turn. So that's an absolutely nasty line. I just love that line so much. I, I'm just like looking at all these at, at all these engine lines. I'm trying to you know also also make it into digestible concepts that 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 I would apply and you guys can apply to your games. But this is just one that I thought was just so so fun and also could happen in the game because in this position like knight c3 and queen e2, these are the most common moves. And knight e4, castles long, the, the, that actually could could happen. So definitely let me know if you get bishop to a3 in a game. All right, but that all started with g3. And I think if you get g3, it's actually probably pretty likely that you could get that line in the game. All right, enough with g3. Let's talk about, so we're, I'm also so, so excited to get to queen f3. There's just so many cool lines. But the, the queen f3 one, one is especially nasty. But okay, knight f3. Knight f3, they think they're so cool. They think they're so cool. They're like, oh, you gambited? No, I'm gonna gambit. Take my pawn. Rook g1, queen h3. What do we got here? All right. All right, here, if white plays here like rook g3, which I think is the most common move, we just play queen back to h6, we're protecting g7, and there's really not much to say about this for white, honestly. Like, it's just not that good. It's just we have a bishop pair, they have holes around their king, they can maybe escape here, but like also probably not. Like for example here, just bishop to e6, we're just gonna play bishop to d6 with tempo on the rook. This pawn might be falling. We're gonna castle. We're gonna bring our rook to the center. We're gonna play d4. We're gonna play f6 to stop the bishop from hitting g7. And black's just much, much better. Black is just much, much better. So not really that advisable, honestly. They have one other idea, which is bishop takes g7. So they can fish after this pawn. We can't really play rook g8 because that rook is actually protected. So if they like take here, this is protected rook. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to trade and play bishop to g4. And so this starts actually a forced variation because bishop g4 actually looks like it's just winning that knight. I mean, they could play rook takes g4 as is the next most common move, but they're just really just down exchange here. Uh, again, like it looks like maybe this is kind of scary for us, but they have it's scary for them. Their king is in the center. They have no developed pieces. They're farther from castling than we are. And as soon as we cast along, we know we're going to be safe. We've got pawns there. Anyway, bishop g4, knight g1 is the best move. So they hit our bishop and hit our queen. Kind of an interesting line. So we take d1, they take h3, we take c2. And we end up in this position where a lot of white players actually blunder. There, there's actually 117 games in this position in the Lee Chess database. A lot of white players here blunder with something like knight c3. And we're just playing bishop g6, and all of a sudden that rook is completely boxed in. So for example, knight takes d5, just king f8, and that rook goes bye-bye. And it doesn't even go bye-bye in a nice way. Like, it takes the bishop, h takes is also very nice. So, bishop g6 is a good threat, so they need to bring the rook back out, but then we just castle, we're playing d4, everything is groovy here, and we are equal in pawns. Anyway, so we're not even risking anything. So, fun line there if they play knight to f3, trying to counter-sacrifice one of these pawns. Okay, 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 okay. It is time. It is time. I've kept you guys in suspense so long. It is time for queen to f3. This is the last line. I'll, actually, it is the last line other than Stockfish's recommendation. Other than Stockfish's recommendation, which I'll get to after. But so queen to f3, we are going to play a very unintuitive move, just 6% of the time, It's but it's the best move, and this is a crazy win rate. This is a crazy, crazy win rate. 75% win rate for this move. Queen g6, and honestly, it should be even higher. Queen g6, so, so subtle, so subtle. We are attacking c2, and you might say, oh, that's just a random pawn. It's not a random pawn. I mean, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty severe. It's a pretty severe pawn. Like, like we're, we're hitting this bishop, and we're going to grab knight, or, or probably that way, rather, uh, into d3. So white absolutely cannot just let this hang. Or even worse here, bishop to g4 first, and now queen takes c2, the engine saying... Uh, this is not a good trade, the rook's hanging in every line. So they need to protect this pawn, they can't just leave that guy hanging. So the most obvious way to do it, because knight a3, we can also just grab that knight. The most obvious way to do it is to play this move d3. Just blocking this, right? Why not? But, but, this is the exciting stuff. Who would have known from this position where white looks as developed as us? Who would have known from this position that 
an absolutely nasty, nasty, nasty trap is about to be set. Knight to b4. We're still going after c2. They're like, okay, what are you doing? Well, they can't use their queen to defend this because it's tied down to g2. So they must play here knight to a3, right? Knight to a3, and I'll get back to maybe some other ways that white could have avoided this trap. But after bishop to g4, this is their last chance to avoid the trap. Would you go to f4 or would you go to g3 if you were white? Well, uh, 144 out of 164 players here, or, or 100, one of them actually hung their queen, said queen g3. And now, black to move and win. What do we got? What do we got? Do we have it? Knight takes d3. Knight takes d3. Give me three exclams for this one. Give me three X clams for this one. After pawn takes back, bishop to b4 check. This knight is over here. It cannot block. It cannot block. These bishops are slicing through. King f1, only move. Queen takes d3 check. Of course. Look at our bishops. Look at our bishops. There's nothing white can do. Knight e2, we take it. King g1, we take it. Everything's hanging. We're about to go up. Uh, at least one piece, we take the knight, or we can even just protect our bishop. We're up at least a piece in this position, um, so white can essentially resign. Uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So white here had one last chance to dodge this absolutely filthy knight takes d3 and bishop to b4 check trap. And it's actually good. These are actually, like, all engine moves. These are all engine moves. Like, like white's ways out of this are not fun. Queen to f4 is a way out of it. At least, now knight takes d3 is a no-no. Be careful, because bishop b4 is a no-no. So don't do no-nos. Do yes-yeses. Bishop d6. Tempo on the queen. If bishop e5 here, we can actually just play knight takes d3, not for the reason you think, but just to get our pawn back, and we're just better because we have the initiative, and we're not down a pawn. Uh, so here, queen d4 is possible. Let's just protect g7 in a nice way, and play c5 next turn. The queen is running uncomfortably low on squares. So very, very excellent, excellent compensation here for black. Anyway, with the bishop pair, with all the pieces going nicely. Uh, the recommended move, uh, according to Stockfish here, is actually not knight a3, but rather king d2 to keep the knight in blocking radius of this diagonal that would otherwise kill this king. King d2, I don't think anyone's going to play king d2. In case they do, though, just play bishop f5, and you still have nasty sacrifices on the table. In fact, like, for example, bishop takes d3 is it's essentially unstoppable. Takes, queen takes, this would be mate. So bishop takes d3, like, they have to be very careful against that. a3 also lends them into some more uh, killer issues here. Bishop takes b1 could come. Bishop e4, trapping the rook can come. So not fun for white at all in this position. Uh, what else could they have done? What else could they have done? Honestly, not much. They could play... What's the, what's the engine wreck here? It's knight a3. Just play bishop g4 and bishop d6. Pleasant position here. Pleasant position here. Um, what, 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 what can I say? It's saying b5 to play b4 to hit the knight to take this pawn. So really, really nice stuff here. And white is really, really struggling to protect everything, to not get mated, to somehow develop their pieces and make, uh, make it so their king can escape and really only has a pawn to show for all of this. So queen f3, we play this nice, nice move, queen g6, which gets the ball rolling on all these hits on g uh, c2 with knight b4 and bishop to g4. Otherwise, the engine recommendation is this very unnatural, 7% of the time, king to f1. King to f1 to protect g2, and it does leave some other, like, like you're taking castling off the table, but at least, you know, you didn't create so many light squares, at least you still have c2 protected, and you can play knight to f3 hitting our queen. What can I say about this position? We just play bishop to g4, hitting the queen, knight to f3, and or pawn f3, it's playable, we just come back bishop e6, and we develop very nicely, bishop coming to c5, rooks coming to the center after we castle, and d4 as a nice central break coming, and just a really, really fun position. I'd much, much rather be black in any of these positions, really. Knight to f3, we're just going to go queen h6 to save our queen. And this is really the best white can play, I guess. It, it still now, if I turn on Stockfish, it's just giving 0.0. It's just giving 0.0. .0. And uh, how should black play? Really, honestly, just nice, say nice c3. We castle. Bishop coming to d6. We can do breakthroughs, including d4. 
on the table. Also, F5, F4 is a nice one with this file open. And if you're white, I'm not really sure uh, how to play this. Maybe King G1, H3. Try to free yourself. Try to maybe manually castle a little bit somehow. But that's the line. That's the line. B3, we are playing E5, and we are going to leave this pawn here. D5, Bishop E5, they're going to think we're such a noob. We're playing Knight to E7. And we're going to play a6, and in every line we're playing queen g5, they play knight f3, we're playing e4, queen's coming to g5 in lots of lines anyway. I really, really love this. I'm so, so excited the next time some titled player plays b3 against me because they do it all the time. All right, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll link my Leech Us study. Shout out again to PD159. I'll link their Leech Us study. And please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate all, all, all the support for making uh, Gambit repertoire videos like this. And see you guys on Twitch. All right, peace out, Gambit Chats. Have a good one.